Welcome back. In this episode I'm going to show you how to sharpen a knife using a whetstone. Now, it's pretty simple. Here's how. First important thing is you have to leave the whetstone in a water bath for about 15 minutes just to let all the water soak into the stone. And this is very important. That's why it's called a whetstone. The second important step is to get the stone completely level. What you want to do is just want to draw some lines with a pencil just to create a grid so that you know what sections of the stone are sharpened or not. This is very important because it's very misleading to just look at a stone otherwise. You just can't see it. So, there we go. Okay, now you just simply take the other stone and you rub it against it, up and down, rotate, just to get all corners. Like this, you can simply already start seeing where the valleys and troughs are. Now, yes, you can see it because this is dirty and that's not, but if it was all clean, you wouldn't know where it is. Okay, so once you sufficiently flatten the, the surface, what you want to do is just taper the edges off. Okay, so we start our sharpening process on the lower grit. So this one is 1000, this side, and the other side is 8000. Now, I do recommend you have one stone between 1000 and 2000, and another stone of between 7000 and 10000. And that's the two essential stones you want. You can also have many steps in between, but I don't think it's necessary to have more than that. There's a couple ways you can sharpen a knife. There's the strict Japanese way, which is forwards and backwards. And holding it at the exact same angle all the time. The Western way, which is you basically start at the back and then bring it to the front and then to the back, to the front, to the back and to the front. Basically going through the entire motion of the blade. I like to do it at about a 45 degree angle and it's very important to hold your blade at about 10 degrees angle so put flat on the ground and then just lift it up a little bit and you're looking for about half a thumbs width up okay and you just want to hold it at that level and then just bring it backwards lightly forwards bring back relax bring back relax and you want to just keep doing this and just move up and down the blade slowly and you just want to listen to the sound just to keep the same sound all the time see this residue that's forming here on the stone you want to keep this on it you don't want to uh, wash it off every time because it's not the stone that grinds down the metal, but this metallic residue. Keep doing the same motion, same angle. Now you just feel a burr, or the edge slightly curling over on this side. Okay, now that's a perfect time now to switch over to the other side. And just repeat the process. So you always keep exactly the same angle. And this ensures a razor sharp edge. It's important that when you pull the sharp side of the blade on the stone that you relax your hands and then you slightly push when you pull away okay and just slowly move up and down the blade 
Now the tip is the most difficult part I find to sharpen because you have to vary the pressure and you to keep the angle you slightly lift the back up. After about 25 minutes of sharpening on the 1000 grit whetstone, the knife is quite sharp, but it's still not where I want it to be. Even though that is razor sharp, it can be better. So, now we flip over to the 8000 grit. So what you're doing is you're polishing the edge to its final stage. Now you put a little bit of water on it, keep that same 10 degree angle, now you simply just drag back, relax, drag back, relax, don't put too much pressure, drag back, relax. So you slowly move down to the belly of the blade, which is this side, to the tip. Once you feel you've finished uh, completely polishing the blade, what you want to do is just a couple nice simple strokes on either side throughout the entire length of the blade just to unify the entire surface. Alright, so now that I've sharpened this knife, the question comes, how sharp did it become? Now, this is a very difficult question to answer without uh, any scientific equipment. So I've devised a little household test of items you can easily find at home. So the first is a sheet of paper. So here we have a creme brulee recipe, which I don't need anymore. Try to do that at home with the knife you have. Just this, this motion here. That's just impossible without a sharp blade. Okay, now, a wet sponge. You can just buy it at your supermarket. Here's some water. Okay, it's still wet. That is how sharp it is. And now, a tomato. That's not that amazing. Without touching the tomato, let's make some carpaccio. I think I can go thinner than that. Now, if your knife can do this at home, you have a sharp enough knife. Now, the Miyabi knives actually come this sharp from factory. You can just buy one and it'll be at this level and you can use it at least for the next two or three months before you have to sharpen it. If you want more information about cutting stones, click here. If you want more information about this killing machine I call a knife, then click here. Um, that's about it. I'm just going to leave you here with these two links. Just click on them whenever you feel comfortable. Have you still not clicked on a link? No. Alright. Fine, I'll take them down. Alright, next week I either have the choice of the spicy tuna roll 2.0 here, or the cucumber roll 2.0 here. Now, leave your choice of which roll to make next week in a comment below, and the winner will be made, and the loser will fade into history as a forgotten, never made sushi roll. Sad, sad place for any sushi roll. Okay, so that was how to sharpen a Japanese style chef knife. And now we're going to move on to sharpening a samurai sword. Oh, sorry, I'm being told that uh, we're out of time. So maybe next time. <laughs>